Good, good afternoon. I almost said good morning. <laughs> good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today um, on our financial webinar. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to let you know that in <clears throat> the sidebar, there is a handout, a financial webinar handout. Uh, we also send it out via email as well, so you'd have it ahead of time to make some notes on. Um, so if you didn't get that, you can and you have a chance to print it real quick, you can do that. That might help um, help you out today. So my name is Jody Truman and I am the financial specialist for Child Nutrition. I don't have all the answers, but I'll do my best to guide you um, in, your, in filling out your financial report. I have David Hartley with me as well, um, and he can answer, he'll be able to help answer some questions as well at the end. I wanted to also let you know that we are working with the school finance department to update and create a cheat sheet with all of the codes that your business manager might need for reporting child nutrition revenue and expenses. Next year, I will be planning a series of webinars to help you dig deeper into your financials. Today, we'll be just scratching the surface. Okay, so for today, our topics for today will be the annual application. Um, I'm squeezing this in there as we have a few new, uh, new items for program year 2024. Um, we have an audit report um, that has a little bit of change and just want to clarify some things for you. And we have the CMP Web User Access Annual Certification on the checklist that we're gonna be talking about. And then we'll be heading into the annual financial report. We're looking at the time frame of financial report and the due date, the location of the financial report, how you can find that, how to read your reimbursement descriptions and the payment tab, how to read that and how it can um, uh, match up with your financial report as well. And the ins and outs when completing the report. Okay, so the annual application. So this is part of your annual application and it's the audit compliance. Um, so we, this is what it looks like. It's on program year 2024. We're going through the sponsor information sheet um, and it's audit question, uh, questions, I'm sorry, 38 to 41. And we're gonna be looking at that right now. So the audit compliance is referring to all sponsors expending $750,000 or more in federal front funds from all of your programs. So not just child nutrition, but any of the federal programs. Um, and this is due every year. This includes private and non-public schools. We've had a lot of questions regarding this, so that's why I'm gonna talk a little bit about it. The public schools report this information to the Department of Education Finance Department, and that results in a, in, and that results are listed on a report called the P100. This is important. This is a report that your school auditors look at. Private schools do not report funds to the state of Maine. Therefore, audit documentation must be uploaded on the checklist tab to complete this requirement. And this is a new process this year. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see the, on the, a piece of the checklist tab um, where you'll be uploading um, the audit report for non-public school, private schools. So I did, so I'm not gonna go over each of them, but you can go through later, but I break it down in each question. Um, this question 39, if you answer no or yes, where you move on from there um, and so forth. I will make note, uh, let you just be aware that on the help tab, uh, part of your application process, um, this is all the same thing as coming um, from there as well. So if you have any questions, you go to the help tab um, and your application uh, in the application process for program year 24.
As part of your 2024 application process, you are required now, um, as part of your required document uploads, will be a CNP Web User Access Annual Certification Form. The superintendent will validate that all users listed in the user tab. So the user tab is picture is right there and it will list anyone who have who has access. All so all active employees will be listed there if anybody has left your uh, left the district um, or any new people that are signing on, you will need to contact Paula to get a new user agreement. Um, and that can be taken care of outside of this form. This form will need to be signed by the superintendent and then uploaded. If you log into Program Year 2024, you can print off your required doc forms documents on the checklist tab and have your superintendent sign those forms um, and get a head start on that. I keep messing up. I'm new at this, can y'all tell? <laughs> All right, moving along. The financial reporting, what you are all here for. Um, I just wanna preface that you, if you have a system in place um, already for your financials and it's working, keep doing that. Um, we just have had many new directors this year and they're all still learning. And at this point, I'm showing a simple approach to completing the financial report. Next year, we'll definitely dive deeper and have, a, and have more webinized, webinars to help you in this area. I keep doing it, I have it, sorry about that. <laughs> so <clears throat> in order to complete your annual financial report, you will need your income and expense reports for the following programs and periods that are listed here. This information usually comes from your business manager and you may need their assistance in filling out the report. Not all sponsors will have participated in each of these programs but they are all part of the annual financial report. The expenses and revenues should match what is reported quarterly and yearly to Maine DOE. <clears throat> Finance usually completed by the business office for public schools. Food service directors should be viewing all expenses and revenues to confirm they are all child nutrition transactions. On a side note, it's easier to review these reports monthly or quarterly so it is not so daunting to complete, compare the whole year at once. So <clears throat> this report can be, um, you can be working on it all year and just updating quarterly, monthly, quarterly, um, it's up to you, however you prefer. So we have the SNP program year, which is <clears throat> July 1st through June 30th. The SFSP program, just to make a note that it's this is last year's program year, 2022. And then those schools that are participating in CSCFP at risk after school meals, you have two program years. We have July, August, September of 22 and program year 23, October through June of 23. So I just wanted you to make, make note of those. <clears throat> I've now taken the payment receipt information and matched it with your payments tab. All of your payments for meal reimbursement are listed on your payments tab by batch number. At the bottom, you will have your total payments for the year. Um, just to note that snack and milk are not included in this example of the payment receipt. I think we only have two sponsors in the state that have the milk program. I want to note, <clears throat> please note too that um, hold on. Part of your annual financial report 
it's, I'm sorry, I, I missed a page, so I'm gonna start. <laughs> I'm gonna start again. Another piece of data that can help you with your annual financial report is understanding how your reimbursement matches your payment receipt. Above is a reimbursement payment receipt showing the breakdown of all federal and state funds received. <clears throat> the first four lines are federal funds reimbursement for your lunch and breakfast and FFEP. Some sponsors might also have a snack program and milk listed as well. One of the common questions we get is what does lunch regular and SA lunch mean? They are both your combined total of your lunch reimbursement payment, just broken down a little further. I have added a picture at the bottom from the sponsor claim reimbursement summary. This might help get a clear picture of the actual numbers. So <clears throat> as you can see from the re lunch reimbursement, the regular is our paid federal meals rate times the total of all meals served. So you have 2,605 meals times the rate equals the $17,926.35. And then the SA, you have at the reimbursement amount of 51473.19. And then you just minus the regular of the 17,926.35, which is the 33,546. And you can see that on the payment receipt above. So the regular, again, is just your total, it's all the meals. Um, that you've served times the paid reimbursement rate. So this is 87 cents. Going back to the payment receipt, <clears throat> after FFAP lists all of funds you received by the state of Maine. They are lunch, breakfast, and local foods, local produce, I'm sorry, local produce. Okay, so this is uh, taken, I've taken the payment receipt information and matched it with your payments tab. All of your payments from real, for meal reimbursement are listed on your payments tab by batch number. At the bottom, you will have your total payments for the year. And again, snack and milk are not included in this example. So as we can see here, <clears throat> the lunch, at the top of your um, sponsor summary, number one is matching your on your payment receipt, the lunch um, regular and essay. So that's all of the federal reimbursement. So you can see that match. Um, a number five is all, and it says match under the payment uh, sponsor summary. And number five is all of your state uh, reimbursement <clears throat> is all attached there. So as you can see, you have two, you can match with a breakfast uh, for your FFEP. And with this example, your six is your local produce. So this is just a quick snap. So you can kind of see where the numbers are coming from. And this total payment line will help you fill out <clears throat> the income section in your annual on your annual financial report. And uh, these two pictures are here are from the SFSP payment tab, um, <clears throat> year 22. Um, and you're just gonna combine operations and admin, um, for, and that's number seven. And then CACFP, if you're participating in that program, you would pull those numbers and you'll also combine them as they are federal funds as well. <clears throat> now we'll move into the annual financial report. This is the second year reporting the annual financial report in CNP Web. This is a once a year report that must be completed by September 1st. Access to this report is given to the sponsor admin and can be viewed by the claim approver. Once you log into CNP Web, you'll enter into program year 2023 to complete the report. This report is in the forms tab of the sponsor summary screen. You'll click the plus sign to start the report. 
Now, I just want you to keep in mind that the annual financial report is connected to your application and will only let you input income and expenses that you are participating in. And again, I just wanna make a note that you, you can complete this throughout the year um, and update it and save it as you go throughout the school year. All right, now we're gonna move right into the income section of the annual financial report. And this is, I took a screenshot of what it looks like. A few things to note, you have columns A through J going across and lines one through eight going down. You are inputting all the numbers, including the total column. The system does not add them up for you. Um, column J is where you're gonna be putting the a la carte items or catering income. And I kind of made, made a box up there so you can see that. Line six in other income, that is where you're going to be putting your SA, SCA funds, your PEBT, um, any equipment grants, or any other grants um, that you might get as well. Um, and again, keep in mind as you're looking at this, like this, um, this picture here, this sponsor is does not signed up for fresh fruit and vegetable program so you can see that there is no box for them to input numbers so again you can see how it's connecting to your um, application okay now we're going to dive into into um, the sales to children the first part of um, of the income section here, this only really should be filled out for those that are charging meals um, for the lunch, after school snack, or breakfast. Um, really, you're only going because of all meals are at no charge. So really, the only line you should or you will probably be filling out here is J, and that is the a la carte. So any of your a la carte sales um, to students would be put here. We have adults, sales to adults in number two. And again, that line really is the J column. You're gonna be doing your, um, your a la carte sales for adults and any catering that you might have there as well. Um, loans and interest, um, depends how your business manager breaks stuff down. You may have interest, um, you may not. Um, if you do, you can add that there. Um, now the state revenue match. Now this is where those little dots came in from the numbers from the previous page. So five and six, and that was your um, state match, all your main uh, reimbursements are number five and number six was your local foods. So you're gonna add those two up and put that uh, amount in your school lunch and then you'll total it in the on the A column as well. Now your federal reimbursement, this is all your federal money that you receive from meals. So we have, and you can match them up, one was one, three, two, four, seven, and eight, and that was all on that previous screen, looking at your ta uh, payment tabs, um, the payment tab screen where I coded them for you. So that is where you would put all those, all that there. Your other income, so again, we talked about SCA funds, uh, PEBT, um, that would all be put um, here. Town appropriation, if uh, you get town appropriation, that money would be added here as well. You would put all that in your school lunch um, with the exception of breakfast. Um, you can do your 33% calculation. Um, like we'll talk about, I think we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but so that's where you can, you would put that information there in the other income. Any any income that you are receiving that is for for the child nutrition program outside of your meal reimbursements that you've already indicated in your state revenue match and your federal reimbursement rebates. Um, you may or may not have rebates um, money to put here. Um, usually those are checks that you receive back from your 
a vendor from ordering cases, you order 20 cases, you're gonna get a $100 rebate. Um, that would be um, where you would see that money. Um, and again, it all depends on how your business manager has broken your income down. Um, and that's why it is important that you do talk with your business manager um, and kind of get their, um, their input. And so that is it for here. Again, you're gonna uh, match your numbers from your payment tab and put input those line, put input that those numbers in lines four and five, and any other income you've collected in the appropriate columns. Um, you will be adding up. Um, you'll be adding up B through J and putting your total in columns A to going down one through D. Again, this is uh, what I was explaining just a minute ago. You have your payment tab and I've added up those, I've put those numbers there for you. And I took a screenshot of the income section of the annual financial report in the state and, re and federal reimbursement. And so you can see how those numbers match up. That's just a little visual for you. Okay, now we're gonna be going into the expense section. Okay, this is what the expense section looks like. You'll be adding the expenses to each section and we're gonna look, we're actually gonna look at each, each one of them as well. The first one we're gonna look at is your food expense. Now, what I did is I um, I gave you examples for each piece. Um, we're starting, uh, we're just, the examples, we're starting with a $300,000 food expense. Um, and looking at C is, we're gonna start there. So the after-school snack program, if you are participating in the after-school snack program, looks like I did that in there, um, you would do, you could do your, um, Take your number of meals that you served and have an and figure out what your average meal cost was and times it and that's what that's the number you would put in there. That's just an easy, a quick um, estimate if you don't have the actual um, meal cost. I mean, I'm sorry, you need your meal cost. You need to come up with your meal cost um, of what that meal was and it can just be an average and then times it by the number of meals. For, so example, we had a thousand meals and it, uh, each meal was approximately 75 cents. So you would put $750 in that line. And it looks as though I put it in the wrong, I did not put it in after school snack. It should go right here. Um, number D, total breakfast <clears throat> for food expenses for the year. So this, um, Again, I changed my example. So if you had $100,000, um, it would be 33% would be 33,000. So that is the amount that you would put in the school breakfast. Um, so we're using that 33% as an estimate for breakfast out of your total food expenses. So then you're looking at E, your total special milk for the year. Um, Again, not many people have that, but if you, this is not your a la carte milk. Um, this is the special milk um, program that we have. And again, not many people have this, but you would say you would, did 250 for the year times 30 cents, you'd put your $75 in there. Um, your total food cost for SFSP, this is an example. You would use your June 30th inventory plus any food purchased for SFSP, then minus August 30th inventory or, or your end of your SF, SFSP program. And that will equal your food expenses for SFSP. So the example here was $5,000. Um, same thing with total SFSP snack milks. You're going to take your count times your meal cost and put that there. Um, total a la carte, that should be separated as the year goes on. You should um, have that um, have that total be tallying that um, for your food, a la carte food expenses. And then you're just gonna add them across, um, take your three, uh, $300,000 adding C through J minus that, and that would be the rest would go under your school lunch program. D. 
David has a comment. When you're figuring out the total lunch cost, subtract out all of the other figures that you've pulled out. The breakfast cost you determine, that comes out. The snack snack program, the milk, all that, subtract that because if you when you enter these figures and the total you put in A, if the math doesn't work, you'll get an error message. So if you, like David said, if you add up your, after you've pulled out all your expenses in columns C through J, you're going to minus that out of your total and the rest is your school lunch. And again, like he said, if you do, there will be error messages um, if you, if the, if the totals are not equaling. Okay, the next section is labor. So again, we're going to start with our, if you had $200,000 in uh, labor and benefits, <clears throat> to get that breakfast on line D, again, you can take that 33% um, and put that and get your labor and benefits so that if you're, if you do not already have another way of doing that, so that would be the 66,000. <clears throat> labor cost, um, G for fresh fruit and vegetable, um, you've reported your fresh fruit and vegetable labor cost in your monthly claims. So you would be pulling that out from your monthly claims. Um, and that, and actually for the food, you would have done the same thing for fresh fruit and vegetable on the food part. You actually, you report that on your monthly claims so you can go to your claims and pull that number as well. Um, H <clears throat> is FSP. Um, that's easy. You that your labor is only for those three months, so that's an easy pull that you should be able to quickly grab for your labor cost. Um, and J, um, how much time is being used by your staff for a la carte or catering? What would be the percentage? Use that percentage and times it by uh, your labor benefits to get your dollar amount. So that's something you may, you're going to have to do on your own um, to figure out. If you don't do a la carte, then nothing would be there. Did you want to add anything? If you're doing milk a la carte only, don't do labor. The next part of this is the equipment, 300 or less. So it's 300 per item. Um, enter that for each column purchased. Um, put it all in B, um, unless you unless you've got equipment for like the breakfast after the bell. Then obviously you'd put that under the D. Um, if you added equipment in FFVP, um, which that is indicated there, there you'd put that on your claim, um, and you would um, you'd pull that from your claims, your individual claims. Um, so you you can break that down down there. Um, and then number 12 is over 300,000. Um, so that could be your equipment grant that you may have gotten um, from us. And that's just one box you put that, anything over $300 um, per item would be the total combined um, amount would be put there. Okay, other. So this would be your non-food totals for all your categories. Most all of it's going to be in B, um, but again, your FFEP, you would have indicated that in your claim section as well, so you can pull those numbers there. Um, if you, um, so like I said, it's all non-food, um, and you would break it out in each category. Indirect costs, uh, there shouldn't be anything there. Um, that should be zero. So with this here, your total expenses at the bottom, column A, number 15. This is when you're gonna add up everything from, um, I think it was number 10, all the way down uh, through 14 and put your total there. As you can see, columns uh, B through J, the system does actually add those up for you, but it doesn't do your total. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. <laughs> um, so we also have on your left hand side of your um, of the report is um, 
it, it's the, is the calculate and save button. So once you've entered your data, you can press the calculate button. This does not add up your columns, but it did it, on line eight um, and 15, it does add up the call, like I just showed you the, the B through J, it does add those up for you. The save button will tell you if there's any errors in your calculation. So all errors must be fixed before submission. Um, and I will um, also mention that it's very important that you save as you go, even though you'll get errors until all your calculations are correct, because there is a time, uh, this is time sensitive. Um, so after, and I can't remember the how many minutes, but it's only, um, does you have, I don't know, like a half an hour before it will time you out. Um, I can't remember what that, I apologize. But so it's important that you're saving as you go. <clears throat> okay, so the next part of the annual financial report is your account balance. So number 16, this is the beginning balance of from as of July 1st, 2022. This would be the figure after all the transfer of expenses and revenue was completed for your end of year closeout. Usually this is the figure that the auditors are looking at. So 17 and 18, um, you're gonna add those numbers from um, what's above. So in A, so 17 would be A and 18 would be your um, A15. I'm sorry, yeah, A15. So it's the ones from your, your total income from above and income and expenses will be added here. And then you're just gonna add up um, to get your ending balance. You're gonna take your beginning plus your income minus your expenses, and that's gonna be your ending balance. Your accounts payable, number 20. Um, these are any of the bills that have not been paid um, yet that are still impending or haven't, haven't gone through the process yet. So you're gonna put any of those outstanding uh, bills and your accounts receivable is is that claim that has not you have not been paid for yet or any additional money that you are still waiting on getting received and then you have your balance so it's your um so you take your ending balance minus your number 20 your payable plus your receivable and then that's the ending um your ending account balance and theoretically, that account balance for the following year would then move right up to 16 for the following year um, in a perfect world. <laughs> All right, so the next section um, is the average meal cost calculation. So all the information that you've entered up above filters down into your average, average meal cost. So this is where, unless you really have your percentages, um, everything's broken out into detail, um, you may not get an accurate picture of what your average meal cost is. Um, and that is something we'll be working on next year is making sure um, you really know what's going on, what your average meal cost is, how to get that, um, making sure you have um, your, you know, how much labor and benefits are in each uh, in a meal and all that stuff. So we'll be working on that, that next year. So this year, this might not be 100% um, accurate, especially if you've lumped everything under under school meals and not broken it broken it and have not broken it out. Um, so certification is the next part. So this is you're going to select the last month for which the claim was submitted for the program year. So really, that should be June 2023, because um, we want this done at the end of the year. You cannot complete this until you've actually submitted that claim. The system will not let you um, finish this process until it has actually been submitted. Um, on a side note to that. And number 26, um, who has prepared this? Um, we need to know who this is, because we may have questions and we need to know who to contact. Uh, 27 is, um, this is the last piece. You have to check that box to submit it. 
once you've checked that box, um, then it's pending approval. And you can see that at the bottom. Um, I highlighted that on the forms tab and you can tell when it's ready to go. And once we've approved it, um, you'll see the approve button there. And that concludes our financial. <laughs> um, and again, I just want to reiterate that um, I know this is a lot, um, a lot of information. Um, and again, it's only scratching the surface. Um, and really to dig deeper um, is going to take a lot of time. And um, that's something that we'll be looking at next year to help you out with. Um, so, I guess we have some questions, Paula. <laughs> yes, you do, Jody. <laughs> so, in regards to the payment receipt, when will the final numbers of payments be listed there? Yep, so June 23 would be your last claim. Um, so, your payment receipt, um, so it'd be, you file your claim in July. So July 1st, or between the 1st and the 8th is when you would file your claim. Um, it could be, I think actually, oh, you, you're gonna know this before anybody else. So I did open up claims. So if you end school June 15th, you will be able to file your claim before July 1st. So I did do that for you guys. So theoretically, um, it's gonna be listed there on the payment tab. However, it's not gonna to total at the bottom, but you can just take that, it'll say open transaction um, above the batches, and you will you can just add those up at the bottom and add them with your total. Otherwise, you'd have to wait till it actually got paid out, which would be the 12th of the month is when we pay them out. So it'd be after the 12th of July if you wanted a clean picture. If not, you can just add the two. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> Where do we enter the money refunded to parents for meal account balances? Let's go back to, so that would be an expense. I want to get the expense. So I would say you would be take if you're, if you, it's wherever you, wherever you put the revenue. So if you put the revenue in school lunch, then that's where you're going to take it out of ex, in expenses. So if you deposited that money, you'd, you would have, I'm sorry, back up. You would have deposited that money in your a la carte. So in column J, that would be where your income is in J. So that is where, let me go back to the income tab. So sales to children, J, that's where you'd put your income when you write a check out to them at the end of the year for, for the money that they did not spend. You would then put it in, I guess, other. I would have more questions about this. Yeah. Is this going back to before all the free meals? Is this money you did receive on account this year for a la carte purchases? You've recorded and received it. Did you record it as income? Right. Are you only reporting it as income as you spent it? So if you, so I guess if you have more questions of that, that would be on an individual basis and you can give David or I a call for that. The last time I checked our 2022 annual financial report had not been approved. When should we expect approval of that? 22. That's what it says. Don't worry about it. Um, don't worry about, it. Um, don't worry about 22. Um, start this year with 23, making sure you've got your, um, so if, you, if you're looking for what your ending balance was in 22 to bring it forward into 23, um, you really need to be making sure um, with your business manager what you what the true number is to make sure 
that was correct last year. So that is something you all may wanna do this year is make sure that beginning balance <clears throat> was actual was your actual ending balance from, from last year. Any other questions? Yes, yes there are. Yes, this is being recorded and I will be putting it on the website. And Jody, you did say next year we're doing other webinars, so, correct? So next year there'll be a lot more webinars. We're gonna, it won't be um, abroad. I'm gonna be breaking it down into different topics. We may have um, special guests, <clears throat> David, do some things as well. <laughs> um, we will, or some other, yes, there's gonna be a, seri a series next year. Um, to help you all with this. And I do want to also mention the ICN. Um, what's it called? ICN? Who? ICN. Institute of Child Nutrition. Yeah. Institute of Child Nutrition has great uh, webinars, topics, classes that are free um, on your financial reporting as well. Um, so that's another spot that you can you can get help as well. If our last day of school is June 6th, can we add June to May's claim? Yes, you may. Get it, May? Yes, you may. Sorry. She corrects herself. <laughs> I don't do a la carte except extra milks. So do I report them into a la carte? Correct. But don't include a labor cost. Do not include a labor cost. That's it. Okay. Um, thank you all very much for uh, hanging in with me oh. and my bloopers. I can't do any blue. I can't have a blooper take here. <laughs> David, did you have any? Did you have any final thoughts? Just if you think of questions after this, either call in, send an email, and we'll answer those. Yeah. And again, if you have something that works that you've been, you know what you're doing, you're, you're good with this, everything's coming out fine, you have a, you then keep doing what you're doing. Um, but if I've said anything that, are you like, oh, I didn't realize that, you know, in questions, give me a call and um, we can move on from there. But thank you very much, I appreciate your time and I am a phone call away. Have a great day. <laughs>